So if you have any medical conditions that predisposes you to, to different illnesses or ailments, please, please, please speak to your own healthcare providers to make an informed decision about your own healthcare and your own decision about taking the vaccines or not, okay? And so first and foremost, I'd like to introduce um, Dr. Salome Weirdo. Hi there. Um, hi, he everyone. Is, hi there. He is a pediatrician uh, who works in Brookdale Hospital in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and uh, he'll be, you know, thank you so much, Salome, for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having uh, me. No problem. We also have um, Sena Asyama, who is a registered nurse here in the Ottawa region. Hello. Um, and she's a strong advocate, like myself, of mental health as well. Yes. Thank you so much, Sena, for being here with us. You're welcome. <laughs> and we have um, Dr. Leanne Peter. Um, she's also a family physician in the Ottawa region. Okay. She also has a master's in public health, which is quite handy in this discussion as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Peter, for being here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. No problem. And so first, and, uh, you know, first of all, um, you know, of course, I have to thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for the audience for participating and being there. Just um, a quick note, you may ask us questions. Please just um, go into the chat there at the bottom of the screen and ask us certain questions and we'll be going through this. Remember, this is an informal discussion um, among friends. And so we will be uh, openly discussing it. And if you have any questions or something pops up, please feel free to ask us in the chat, okay? Now, um, without further ado, um, vaccines. Why are vaccines important, guys? Why do we need and why do we need to discuss this? Why is this really important? Well, it's basically the largest tool in our toolbox that we have at our disposal to prevent the spread and uh, death, really, from COVID-19. If you look historically, vaccine has been what has, you know, propelled our uh, society, our communities in terms of infant or childhood mortality, things like measles. So, um, I think with this one, it just seems to have come too fast for people because I've, uh, most people are fine with receiving their regular scheduled vaccines. Anybody else? Yes, and to add to that, thank you. Um, I completely agree with you. I think that they have been around, vaccines have been around for a very long time. And we're all used to getting our routine vaccines. If you have kids, you take them to their routine vaccine. Most schools require you to you know, have your vaccination. But in terms of the COVID-19 vaccine, I believe that the reason why so, there are so many questions about it is because of how quickly um, they were manufactured. And that, I believe, is what's probably causing people to be a little hesitant uh, in taking the vaccine. But I definitely think that's part of the main reason, but vaccines have been around for a very, very long time. But then what's the most egregious thing that you've heard of, I mean, it's, speaking of, of which, Senna, you know, um, you know, we're all, like I said, we're, I, I'm a registered nurse, you're a registered nurse as well. We have um, two doctors as panelists. What is the most in your practice in the last four or five months since we've introduce the idea of vaccinations against COVID-19 is the most egregious thing that you've heard. And how did you approach that? Um, I had one guy um, at my workplace, because being a healthcare professional, we were one of the first people that were offered the vaccination. And he said, there's no way he's taking it. He believes that they've put poison in the vaccine to kill everyone eventually. And I was just like having a conversation. I was like, you work in the healthcare field and you take care of people. Um, don't you think by you not taking it, you're putting others at risk? I mean, you may end up getting 
COVID and may possibly recovering because you're a very young person, but the elderly person that you might be taking care of may not be that lucky in recovering. So he was just, there's so many conspiracy theories going on. He thinks that he thought that it was poison put in the vaccine to somehow, you know, depopulate, depopulate the world. And that's why he was adamant about not taking it. Hmm. The one yeah, I, I heard most, oh, sorry. recently, sorry, is um, that it can cause infertility. And, you know, um, I just inquired more, like, where did you hear this? Why do you believe it? And I countered it with just the information that's out there and explained how these vaccines work and how it has not been linked with any uh, infertility. It's so new. Like, I don't even know where they're getting this information, but it was something about um, the spike protein and how it is developing antibodies against placenta cells. And I'm like, that just isn't true. But this is something that is being spread, widespread, and, and reaching people who are educated and, to me, informed, but they may just be looking at the wrong sources or not checking in and verifying the information that they're reading or coming across or, or hearing from somebody else. Salome? Yeah, I think um, <laughs> on the fertility bit, actually getting COVID has been linked with decreased sperm quality in males um, mm. and possibly increased um, incidence of miscarriages in some cases. Uh, because of the hyper hyper COVID? hypercoagulability, that's from getting COVID itself, not the itself, vaccine. Itself, not the vaccine. Getting so COVID. We're talking about, yeah. So okay. Getting okay. getting the infection. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, getting COVID is what may make you infertile, compared with the vaccine itself. Mm -hmm. uh, on the subject of vaccines, there isn't a single more important invention in medicine than vaccine. I don't think people understand the gravity of it. Um, basically, smallpox wiped out 25% of Europe's population before uh, vaccines. Yeah, it's, yeah. 25%. Like, I don't, I don't think people recognize just but let's the, talk, the gravity but, of it because we can take it for granted today. But, but let's simply talk more put, recently, though, too. Yes. We're talking about the Spanish flu and all these other yes. pandemics or epidemics. So what did vaccines do? What <laughs> Vaccines made it such that we can take for granted things like polio, like diphtheria, like measles. Um, because we've never seen it before, I think a lot of us just have been complacent because we, I mean, one of my friends, one of my very uh, close friends I grew up with, um, he was disabled as a result of a polio infection. Uh, one of his, his legs was smaller than the other. Uh, and you can tell that the neurological effects that polio can have, can have that uh, bilateral, you know, one limb being larger than the other uh, sort of effect. And so when he walked, he walked with, with a, 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 a gait that favored one side because one side of his leg was bigger than the other. And it was because of polio. When you go to places who've seen the direct effect and the devastating effect of some viruses and bacteria, you could see just how much they appreciate the difference uh, that a vaccine can make. Even something like TB. I mean, we could just go on and on. Without vaccines, I think so many kids would be on the pediatric ward. I, we, I for first, you know, firsthand would see so many kids. But because, I mean, you could easily link it now, nowadays, because, you, you know, in the advent of uh, vaccine, vaccine hesitancy and anti-vax sen sentiments, you've seen the return of measles. We were starting to see cases of diphtheria again, tetanus, people dying from vaccine preventable diseases. Yes. And so you can directly see it, uh, just how important uh, it actually can be. So I think part of like, uh, speaking a bit on what you were just saying, part of the issue is that we haven't witnessed it or experienced it enough to um, make it real in our heads to say, look, why do I need something? I'm fine. You know, like, nothing's happening. Why, do, why are you making me get this thing? But you can look around the world, look at India right now and imagine like the devastation and 
you know, all they need is oxygen. They're begging, they're dying because of a lack of oxygen. And if we know that this thing, this virus can do that, why not use what we have available to us to try and prevent that? Prevention is better than any cure or any treatment. We want prevention. We don't want our ICUs flooded or hospitals. Flooded. You don't want your loved ones sick. Like I had to convince my parents. They didn't listen to me, the family doctor, but I had to continue to speak on it and engage them and question, you know, whatever uh, conspiracy that came at me, I questioned it and they didn't, you know, it just took time. But that's why I'm here tonight is to continue to engage you guys and whatever questions you have, ask. Our job is not to make you feel small. It is not to belittle you. It is normal to question things. That is normal. And we appreciate that. We wouldn't be doing our jobs if we uh, weren't able to give you the answers you were looking for to feel comfortable to get this vaccine. Yes. Know that I've gotten it and I'm waiting, bragging for my second one, you know? <laughs> yes. But then who, so then if you're, you know, you're talking about your parents. And so, you know, that generation, you know, they, they were vaccinated in the 50s, 60s and 60s. You know, I'm, I was speaking to uh, my mother about this, about how, you know, it, she was eight, 10 years old. And there was just a, a, um, a moment of, of just vaccinations after vaccinations because they were just starting out. And, um, and that's, I'm talking about, you know, 50s, 60s, um, where, you know, they go into little villages in Haiti and say, okay, vaccination time, it's, it's, it's very important. So are these the people that we should be convincing or the young people that we should be addressing this to, to teach our, our family members? and our elderly family I mean, members. What they're they like influencers, right? So children can be influencers of their parents. Family doctors influence their uh, patient population just like nurses do. Uh, church or faith leaders influence their congregates. So there are people that you can kind of target to help disseminate and spread because people are more likely to listen to those that they feel they can trust. So find out who those people are and make sure they're well informed so that the miscommunication can stop. We need to find, you know, a place of stopping it so that we don't continue to spread. And I think that's what's different between now and 2021 and like back in the 60s. It's just social media. It's the overload of information. Daily, you're being told this side effect, this thing happened, but you're not being told like how many people got the vaccine, how many people did this prevent from getting you know, sick or who got mild symptoms. No, you're focused on all the bad and the negative and that's all you see on your feed. So it seems like a bigger problem. And back then you were just told or maybe you read something and you got it. You weren't bombarded with all of these different voices. Yeah, and to um, add into that with what Dr. Peter was saying, I think with social media, we have a lot of young people on social media. And um, I don't know about the other cities, but in Ottawa, the rate of uh, infection, highest rate of infection is between the age of 20 to 29 years old, which are the young people. So I think we really need to drive our message towards them because they're the ones that, you know, might feel like they're resilient, you know, young forever. Um, I can go out there and I can just do whatever. But also uh, thinking in terms of vaccine, like, uh, if enough people did get vaccinated, we would have herd immunity, which would allow most of us to go back to the way things were. And with the way things are right now, um, in Ontario, we're in lockdown. I'm in Ottawa right now and we're in lockdown, schools are locked down. So if we can drive the message to young people who like to socialize, who like to go out there and do things that, guys, if enough of us got vaccinated, things could open up, you know, and we could kind yeah. of go back to what life was before all the this lockdown happen, I think that would really help because um, when they get it, they bring it to, you know, their parents and their seniors, and they're the ones who um, really have to fight hard to survive, right? So I think we really need to drive the message on social media, on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, with these young people who are always on there and let them know that it's okay, it is safe to get your vaccination. 
Yeah, yeah. I think I think the scary. Uh, you know, I I I've been watching. The, I don't watch the news. Typically, I do not. Okay, I'm like no, no, no news. <laughs> Um, however, lately I've been watching closely, um, especially us, you know, being in the public and, and, you know, um, caring for the public. Um, the scary part is, like you said, Senna, there are more and more hospital admissions for people in our age group nowadays, and people are not understanding what that means. So if you have young people being admitted and going into the ICU beds. What about the elderly person who is suffering from something completely different, who also needs that bed? What do you think so about part, that? I mean, part of why we're seeing more young people is because the older people have been vaccinated, right? And that's a mm -hmm. testament of what that vaccine is doing, that we're seeing more younger people. The vaccine's smart. It's gonna go where it needs to go and it's gonna do what it needs to do. Um, so I think, uh, part of what Senna was saying is key and you can, uh, inspire or influence a population to do something if they feel like they will gain something in return. So do you want to go to that festival? Guess what? You're going to have to show proof of immunity. And you know what I mean? Like that is where our world is going. It's unfortunate, but that's private businesses are going to be able to make those decisions and make those rules. So if you want to participate in more large group, you know, um, events, then you may have to show proof that you're vaccinated. And that's a good point that you you said, um, Dr. Peter, because Salome, who is in a client based environment in the U.S., can, can you talk to us about how it's been like for you and Salome out in the hospital and and what are people, you know, and I'm reading what the CDC says, a lot, a lot more people are taking it more seriously than they did the year before. So what, you know, and you're in the, what used to be the epicenter of COVID-19 in New York. Yeah. Um, so New York a year ago, uh, the story was harrowing. I, I don't even know people understand just the gravity of it. Um, there were literally dead bodies. I don't know how you bodies. worked through that. I don't know. Were, <laughs> you know what? I was, we were blessed in peds in that kids who were sick were either asymptomatic or the symptoms were very mild. We only had a few very serious cases of kids being sick uh, with COVID. So, you know, some of my colleagues had to actually go in to help the med medicine team because it was so overwhelmed and, and, and the ER. Um, our ERs were full. There were people waiting outside. There were literally dead bodies. The, the hospital was littered with dead bodies. And it, it's not, it's what you're seeing in India today. It's what you saw in, in, in Italy. Yeah. Um, because when the system is overwhelmed, it's what you, you were close to seeing in Ontario right now. Because when the system is overwhelmed, um, it's not so much that people are so sick that they die, but it's because there are just not enough hands, there are not, not enough resources to care for the sick. And this is how, you know, you start to see the numbers. You know, initially when it starts to pile up, people don't take it seriously. Like, oh, okay, well, people are sick, but you know, so what? But once the system is overwhelmed, that's when you really start seeing uh, the fallout of it. Um, yes. New York now is, is a lot better than it was because the vaccine rates here are, have been very good. Our the vaccine rate in the U.S. right now is about, we're about 50%, at least one, one shot of the population and those who are eligible. And then about 40% of the population have both of their, of their vaccines. I think the target is, is about 70% by July 4th, which is, you know, the U.S. Yes. Independence Day. And New um, York is going to open that would, July yes, 1st. Yes. That's crazy. Um, so if, if Canadians are able to really buy into this plan, I think we'll be, we'll be able to get to some semblance of normalcy relatively soon. But yeah. I think there, there are a lot of faults here. And I think everyone has to own it because we've had faults, uh, the WHO, who dropped the ball. Uh, by initially not calling this a pandemic, not taking this seriously. China dropped the ball, not infor informing the world of what was going on until it was too late, uh, until the virus was in the shores of other countries. The CDC dropped the ball because unfortunately, you know, the, the previous president politicized this process. And then, you know, the directives weren't very clear, which confused a lot of people in the beginning, which then caused them to lose trust in the system. Uh, the FDA, the same. 
And so if that same system, which failed in the beginning, is now telling you, hey, we need you to do X, Y, Z, um, it's difficult to buy in because we dropped the ball. And then, you know, once you lose the trust of the public, it's now very difficult to try to regain it. Um, and then, of course, we can't ignore the historical context of what has happened in minority communities, which, you know, I won't, which has caused, of course, minority communities also to be gun shy about this, especially when you see just how quick things have happened and how quick uh, these vaccines came about. Now, so I think everybody has to own the fact that we dropped the ball in, in informing the public and in, in giving them the, the proper information. I think I don't know what it was if we were afraid to say, listen, we don't know anything about this. And once we have information, we're going to give it to you. Uh, and we, we put out directives without really having, you know, research based information to, to give uh, folks out there. So it was difficult to buy in. Um, that said, I still do think that getting to herd immunity is the best way. And the longer we take to get there, the worse this is going to be because the vaccines that we have now, um, the double mutant in India is starting to show signs that it doesn't really give a crap about the vaccines. And so the longer we let this, back, uh, this virus sit around, the more it's going to mutate and the harder it is uh, going to be to get immunity once you get vaccinated. And so the quicker we get this, the better because viruses can't live on their own. If they don't have hosts, they cannot survive can't survive yes and and if we let it linger the more host is going to get and and that's going to put us in a very precarious position so it's i'm not, hoping and i'm praying that everybody yes. gets vaccinated i mean canada is not like the u.s we're kind of limited with our supply yes, and so i would true. say to are. people that's who very, very are true. still you know undecided to at least pre-register get those yes. appointments on the books yes. and and think about it but Put your name on that list because there is a shortage. We're hoping for more Pfizer and starting, I think, May 6th, they're opening it up to um, even a bigger demographic of people. So every week that passes, we're opening it up. And before, you know, by the end of May, it's going to be 18 plus. So basically everybody will be eligible, whether you'll be able to get it. That's a different question. question. So at least yeah. push your name on the list. At that's least. Yes, nice please. Point. please. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. But then, so, okay, so they, they were talking today about, um, well, no, actually, they've been talking about it for quite a few days here about Jensen, uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, and they're recommending it for people in their 30s. What? <laughs> you know that's not what's that's what's wrong with that astrazeneca is 18 plus they're all 18 plus they are oh yes they all are but mm -hmm. now they're right the, they they were talking about how um johnson and johnson might be much um effective although 65 percent effective but 100 percent effective against the virus but it would be highly recommended for 30s plus what is your take on that i mean I think that's the NA, what are they called? The committee, they decide those age groups, yeah, but all of these, all of the vaccines have been uh, studied and approved for 18 plus. I think one of them is 16 plus, but basically adult. So for these age groups that we're hearing are arbitrary. You know, we're saying 40 plus one week and then 55 next week. We're just opening it up based on what's available, what yeah. we have because we can't just open it up to everybody because we don't have enough. So they're saying 30 because right now we're at 40, you know? They're going to yeah. say 18 plus, hopefully by June. You know right, what I mean? June. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. it's just a number. To add to what Dr. Peter is saying, I think also the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine works better in the older population. So uh, since we're in limited supply of vaccinations right now, or vaccines right now in Canada, um, they're trying to keep those vaccines for people that are a little bit older to get it, uh, while leaving you know, Johnson & Johnson or AstraZeneca for the younger population to get it. I know there are a lot of questions about these vaccines, especially today, uh, where I believe a top doctor 
doctor, you know, said she wouldn't take the AstraZeneca vaccine or don't take it, uh, wait for the Pfizer or the Moderna. And yeah. then there was a big outcry. And then the prime minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, had to come and, you know, talk. And uh, um, the leading doctor for Ottawa Public Health, she also had to come and say, no, get the vaccination when you can. And that's the take home message is that these vaccines are safe. All vaccines have side effects. It doesn't matter what vaccine you get. They all have side effects. It's just that because we're Thank not used you. to the COVID vaccine, we're a little bit hesitant towards it, but all vaccines yeah. have side effects. And if you can get vaccinated, please do, because that's what's going to help us to reach herd immunity. It's going to save lives. You might get COVID and survive, but that 80-year-old grandma may get it and not survive. So, or that like, pregnant woman. All that pregnant woman, exactly. All that person with comorbidity, with diabetes, hypertension, obesity, they may not survive. So let's think of the bigger picture. All vaccines do have side effects, but if you get the COVID vaccine yes. it's going to stop people from dying including yourself or getting seriously ill yeah and and, and hospitalized and hospitalized yeah. yes. exactly and, and, so and, and, let's let's talk I about think. that elephant in the room because that yes. you brought up astrazeneca yeah. and this clock <laughs> thing yeah. let's just do it rip the band-aid off yes yeah. <laughs> yes so yes. they finally added it to like the vaccine this vaccine induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia b-i-t-t so they, I think in Ontario, since the vaccine came out, they said they have under the Ontario like um, website, I think they documented three cases of this. Okay. So after over 3 million doses being administrated, that's what I, was so gonna I, say. I feel like that, that's, that's basically they're saying it's 0.5 to 1.5 per 100,000. enough. Yes. Okay, it is not. It is negligible. That does it's not even negligible. exist. Negligible people. It is, yes. it is comparable but to they the population. Hear it. But it's on the <laughs> yes, news, and that's all yes, they hear. Yes. So we yes. just got to tell you that, that it is negligible. Okay, so that's but when right. you say it like that, when you say 0. 0.5 to 1.5 per 100,000, then you're maybe it's not so scary sounding. You know, so, but let, so just, let me, you're shaking your head though. You're shaking yeah, your head. It, no, no, she's right. She's absolutely, Dr. Peter's absolutely right. It, that, that's literally 0. 0.00. I can't even say the amount of zeros. It is not going to happen to you. That is, it's comparable to the normal population. And yeah. there is also no indication that these people didn't have COVID by the time they went to get their vaccines because COVID in itself does cause hypercoagulability. So it does. Yeah. It's, it's your chances of actually getting and dying from COVID. Okay. Getting and dying from COVID is a hundred times more than getting the vaccine and actually getting a blood clot as a result. That's that right. those are the numbers that we're looking at. So you get COVID, you die from COVID much higher than getting the vaccine and, and getting uh, a blood clot from it, which is so then, negligible. But then it what about exist. those people who are predisposing conditions? What predisposing? In, those in are the terms questions of, that I, we're getting a lot, that I'm getting a lot. Before of. the vaccine? Well, before, yeah, exactly. And so... so what um, do, What is a predisposing yeah, condition? Such as, um, like... You know, if, they, if they've got, uh, you know, thrombocytopenia, if they've got any other type of clotting issues. So Thrombosis what, Canada what, what, came out with a statement. They don't consider that to be like to increase your risk. They don't consider you can have a clot right now and they'll tell you go get your Astra. Okay. Like yeah. you, they don't consider that an increased risk. Right. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about the vaccines. Okay. The, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were the first to come out. And I think yeah. people just need to hear about it. And, and those are mRNA vaccines. They're synthetic vaccines which uh, mimic the spike protein, which causes the body to produce uh, the spike protein by using the mRNA uh, strand that they copied of the virus. Um, and this is the wild type generic form that they use, which is the original without the, you know, now we have all these mutations. Um, so that's what they did. That is not, you don't get the, the virus as a result of that particular uh, vaccine. And those so far have shown to be the most effective, okay? Um, so that's the Moderna and, and the, the Pfizer vaccine. Those are the mRNA vaccines. Uh, and of course, you have the Sputnik V and then you have the AstraZeneca. Uh, those 
those are both um, based on the adenovirus uh, vaccines, which is like a genetically vector. modified um, vector that they use. Um, and then the Johnson & Johnson is a one dose series. All the others are two dose series, except for the Johnson & Johnson, which is, which is yeah. the newest. Yeah. And I'm going for the most to least effective. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine is about, and the Moderna about 95% effective at preventing the infection. Um, but almost, uh, it's 100% uh, decreases your risk of death. Basically, once you get it, you will not die. Like if you believe in numbers, this is how it works. Um, even the least effective, which, which are the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, which are about, I think, 69%, anywhere from 69 yeah. to 72% mm-hmm. effective. Um, so even those are almost 100% effective at preventing death. It's more uh, about, yes, the mortality rate is mortality. almost negligible if you get your vaccines. That's it. Um, and a much higher chance, uh, sorry, a much less chance of being hospitalized, uh, less chance of being symptomatic, uh, so any way you slice it, your chances of actually getting severe infection and severe illness after you've gotten the vaccine is a lot less than if you did not. So those are basic. I mean, you don't need to know the nitty gritty, all the details, but I looked at all the ingredients of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. And as far as vaccines goes, those are about, it's about as simple as they get. Um, you have uh, lipophilic nanoparticles, which is basically fat particles that used to carry um, the mRNA uh, interest into the cells. Um, and then you have some sugars that they use, uh, polyethylene glycol. These are all things that are either in other medications or, you know, we use every day. The lipid, uh, lipophilic nanoparticles are probably the newest things, the new- newest technology and probably where medicine is going because they can actually direct the proteins exactly where they want it to go. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. This is probably the smartest vaccine that's ever been made. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't hear people questioning the fact that um, from within a, a span of 10 years, we no longer go to the bank. We bank on our phone. We do everything on our phone. Um, we don't even move out of our house. We order food <laughs> and it's happened so quickly, but no one's complained about that. We make a vaccine quickly. And then all of a sudden like, all <laughs> hell breaks loose. Like we literally live on our phone like, lost and nobody's minds. complaining, yeah. but that's how, te- that's how fast technology has advanced. This technology has been around since I'm talking a lot, but this, <laughs> I'm going to stop the, the mRNA yeah, vaccine. No, no. The technology has been around since 1989. Okay. This is not new in case anybody's thinking that. We've known about coronaviruses for a long time. We know about SARS. Like, that's it. Yes, yes. And this is that, just this was a, an international effort. This was like yes, all yes, hands on yes. deck. All hands on deck. Yes, I always say yes. Nothing more important. And this is a miracle, you know, yes. that, that they got the absolutely. vaccine out. We should yeah, all absolutely. be, you know, thank you. We should be celebrating, right? Celebrating. That's it. Exactly. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, uh, you know, and with, with that being said, and what you were saying, um, uh, Dr. Weirdo, the, the thing is with the, you know, the, the, this technology and, you know, and I'm getting a lot of questions here about, you know, women wanting to be pregnant, women having fertility issues. And I know we touched on it earlier on, but I do want us to talk about it a little bit more because like we're talking about we're targeting the young people, but these are the same young people who are trying to get pregnant, who want to start families. So what do we say to them who want we to say, who want to take the vaccine, but yeah. feel reluctant because is it going to affect or uh, change the biology of the baby or anything like that? These are questions that, I'm, that we're getting. So we know that if you were to be pregnant right now, you are at a high risk of having a bad outcome should you get COVID-19. So number one, in terms of if I'm pregnant, you know, protecting my baby, protecting me, we're worried more about mom, but it's, it's beneficial that the baby would be born with antibodies should mom get that vaccine while pregnant. If you are not yet pregnant and you're hoping to become pregnant, I would say get the vaccine. You want to put your set yourself up for the greatest, be at your best and not put yourself at risk of getting COVID. So I feel like everybody's gonna have uh, a bunch of scenarios, different things like I'm allergic to this. When I did this, this happened to me. We all have our stories. Nothing is more important than protecting yourself from this 
condition that can lead to death or that can lead to the death of a loved one. You know, so think about it in that way. Yeah, and to add to that, I know Ontario, I believe it was last week or the week before, um, lowered um, the standard and allowed pregnant women to now be vaccinated. Uh, there's no evidence that suggests that the COVID vaccine is going to hurt the fetus in any way possible. Uh, Health Canada would not approve it for pregnant women. Uh, for those of you, those mothers out there, as you know, when you are pregnant, uh, there are a lot of things that tell you can't take this, don't take that. There are a lot of medications you cannot take. And if the vaccine was dangerous to the fetus, then there's no way they would approve it and allow pregnant women to get it. So I would say it's definitely safe to get it. And there's no evidence whatsoever that shows that it affects fertility in any way. I know that these have been statements made by uh, the obstetrical organizations, both in the US and in Canada. You know, like these are the people that will help deliver your baby and they too vouch for this vaccine. Absolutely. If, if you would like to have a healthy baby, get the vaccine now. Okay, wow. because your chances, once you're pregnant, when you're pregnant, your body becomes hypercoagulable. Okay, mm -hmm. you clot faster. Or that's it. That's, that, it. that's how our bodies have evolved. Okay, yeah. which means if you get COVID, your chances of clotting now become a lot higher. It's higher. Okay? Yep, that's it. So the best way to have a healthy, safe pregnancy is to be vaccinated against it so that you don't get COVID in the first place when you're pregnant. So you can have a safe uh, pregnancy. Yes. There is, there is no, there's no evidence that shows that this affects fertility uh, in any way, uh, as uh, Ms. Sana said. So it's, it's the best way to protect yourself um, before you get pregnant. There were people who were uh, enrolled in the studies, the Pfizer study, as, as well as the Moderna studies, who were pregnant. But at the time they enrolled, they didn't know they were pregnant. And so this was a very early phase of it. They were, I guess you could say, accidentally vaccinated. Um, and out of all of them, there were no reported cases um, of any complications with their pregnancy, um, anything happened with the fetus, okay? I think there was about 28 cases in the Pfizer, um, Pfizer trial. Clinical trial, uh, yeah. Yes, and about 22 in the Moderna trial. All of them were fine. Uh, and again, right now, it's going to be safe in pregnant women. It's recommended in pregnant women as well. So I, again, if you want to protect yourself, if you want to protect your fetus, you want to have a health, healthy, safe pregnancy, get the vaccine. Okay, interesting. That's really good. And, and what about allergies? You know, I know Dr. Peter touched on it earlier. You know, we, we, it's true. Everybody's got a story to tell, but the if they're allergic to uh, eggs, no for example. allergy that I know of is the polyethylene glycol, which is PEG which is Restorolax or what is it called again in the U.S.? That's Restorolax. Right. <laughs> That's all um, I know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, that you get, you take when you're constipated, it's like a powder you mix with water or it's go lightly what you get before you get a colonoscopy. I don't know anybody with that allergy that's an anaphylactic uh, reaction, but if you do, that would be one where you should not get it. If you've had multiple anaphylactic reactions, you're like a super sensitive person, uh, you've like had the EpiPen, you've been hospitalized, then you would let them know when you were to get that vaccine and they would just observe you longer. They're at these vaccine sites, they're equipped to deal with this. We have Epi, we know how to manage anaphylaxis. So should that happen, they would just, you would be monitored more closely. You're gonna be observed afterwards anyways for 15 to 20 minutes. I know that the most common side effects that one would experience is the same side effect we experience with any jab, which is pain at the site, redness, you know, soreness, and some people feel a little run down for a day or two. You might get a headache, you know, but for the most part, this is all tolerable. I didn't experience anything. I maybe a little bit of arm pain, but that was all I experienced. And that's the thing, you know, if people fail to understand every medication, we're not just talking about vaccines here. Every, from the Tylenol that you're taking at home to, to a blood pressure medication, it affects an other system. And so there are side effects to everything that you take. Um, and so why are people afraid of, of this side effect? Why are they, or, you know, what's, what's the issue with 
oh, too many side effects. But but do you know that if there are, or what, what you know, what what do you say to this? Like I said, I just feel like um, we've been sheltered and we just haven't experienced it. Like, you know, uh, Dr. Rairdu has in New York, like it hasn't hit home for a lot of people. For my patient population, this is the first time I'm getting, you know, lab results coming back as positive and actually having to manage my own patients over the telephone. And lucky for me, uh, this one guy, he actually had an oxygen, a pulse oximeter, that way I could actually guide him as to whether or not it was time to go to the hospital or not. And this is a cheap thing you can purchase on Amazon for like 25 bucks. Um, but you know, if your oxygen, he might, he was feeling down, but one day he was really feeling really weak, couldn't move, but his oxygen was still 90, 92. So I, I told him he was safe to stay, but to keep a, an eye on it, should it drop below that 90, that he would go straight to the ER. But like, this is someone who was young, 50, otherwise healthy, like fit, he wasn't obese. And we know that obesity will increase your risk. So May 6th, they're increasing it to those who have obesity of a BMI 40 or above. Uh, we just know that they have worse outcomes. So he was otherwise healthy and he, he was run down, like he could not move. And he's never felt like this before. Right. Luckily he's on his way, you know, he's doing better. But there are people who don't get better. It's not, it's not the case for everybody. Um, now, what we're going to do because um, it's seven forty-five. Just want to basically touch on what the the questions here. There are tons coming in, um, so I'll start from the end up. Um, now. I mean, I, I can answer, but that's fine. I, I will let you guys answer this. Um, has these vaccines been fully approved or are they still emergency use authorization? As far as I know, they're still under uh, emergency use authorization um, as of now, because we are in an emergency. This, I don't think people see the gravity of this. We are in trouble if we don't get this thing done and get it away. We're going to, people are already starting to say, virologists are already starting to say, we're probably going to be living with COVID. Oh yeah, it's uh, not going nowhere. I've told it, people and this, it's not. It's too late. Me. It's too late. We're behind the ball. But we yeah. can get back to some semblance of normalcy if, if we get vaccinated. So what would I think- I feel like, like, I feel like it would look like? like, it would look like measles. It would look like, you know, you have patient, you have populations that, they drop the ball on vaccinating their kids and then you have spikes. All of a sudden, there are schools that have like measles. It's gonna look like that. You're gonna hopefully get most people under control and people will listen to getting vaccinated. I believe we're probably gonna need a booster. And so you might see, you know, areas of pockets where there are outbreaks. That's, I think the best case scenario. Yeah. I'm I'm a bit of more optimistic. I I honestly think it might. <laughs> you are. Think, you're such a positive. I, yes, I'm very much an optimist. I hope it goes the way H1N1 did, and we don't see this thing again. But the thing about this virus is, like, if you were to design a very smart virus, this is it. It is so intelligent in that it keeps its host long it enough to infect. Yes, it's evolved. it doesn't kill you. It just keeps you alive long enough to infect everybody else before you even know it. That's and it. And then <laughs> it is, it's just, it, People, it's not it, as virulent as say an Ebola or any of the other pandemics we've seen. It's not, it's nowhere near as deadly as Ebola because Ebola, if you get it, you're 50, 50 chance of survival. <laughs> that is, yeah. yes. So you oh, don't you live dead. long enough to infect enough people, but yeah. this thing just keeps you alive long enough until it gets a host that it can really decimate. And that's that's what you and, see. And that's another thing to remind people about getting this vaccine. It prevents death, it prevents hospitalization. Yes. It does not prevent you from getting it. Right, Okay, right. so you can have it and be completely fine. And yes. so it doesn't mean that you cannot like not wear your mask. You would need to wear your mask unless you're with somebody else who also had been completely vaccinated. You know, that's right. where the CDC is starting to change their whole mask wearing and who you're gathering with, I depending see, on yeah. who's been vaccinated. So it's a, it's a losing you know, effort. Like, Dr. Peter, think about it. Like, right now, I can't go outside without my mask because I, I don't want, even though I'm fully vaccinated, I, I feel uncomfortable. 
It, it, it's I, even though the director says I you should. might get it, uh, you might pass it to somebody yes. else. <laughs> I still have the five percent exactly. <laughs> I still have a five percent chance. The right? vaccines they're not a hundred percent effective. You know, no. Lee Pfizer no. said ninety five percent. So there's still yeah. a chance of you, you still have the five percent chance. Even but you're so less likely to get sick. Exactly, and that's and what we want to prevent: is from getting sick, being hospitalized, or dying from it. That's yeah, what we yeah. But that's exactly. what the, somebody exactly. asked. Actually, they want you to explain to them um, what do they mean by the percentage efficacy versus um, the percentage of of you know when when we're saying it's ninety five percent effective. So it's ninety five percent effective. But what about that 5%? What, what, what do we make of this? The 5% basically means that you can still get infected by it. You yes. know, 95% effective against protecting you from getting, you know, sick, getting infected or getting seriously ill. But if you do have the vaccine and you do get sick, you may not come up with any symptoms. You probably won't be hospitalized. You will be okay. But for the person who does not get the vaccine, they can end up being really sick. Like Dr. Peters, yeah. her client who ha now has to go to the emergency and need an oxygen. And you don't want to do that because COVID has a way of causing pneumonia. And yeah. um, I'm not sure if any of you know what it's like to you know, have pneumonia. I've seen someone with pneumonia. You can't breathe. And that's why it's so deadly. It, it fills up, fluid fills up in your lungs and there's no way of breathing. So to prevent that, why not take the vaccine that even if you do get that 5% and end up getting it, you have a much better chance of survival or being sick. And not just that though, um, because we're even seeing these long haulers, these people that got yes. COVID, oh maybe they goodness. never ended yes. up in the hospital, yes. but they yes. are chronically yes. fatigued. Yes. Especially chronically young people. Feeling, especially especially young the people. young people. Yes. They do not feel themselves, they're winded. They yes. feel like they are they can't focus. And they're it's foggy, like, they, I, the memory is foggy. affected. Yes. And I don't even know how to manage these. Yes. Cases. people in these conditions yeah. because it's so big well, how long is even gonna take yeah exactly uh, we don't know there's so much no. we don't know so you don't want yes. it not just because you don't no. want to end up in the hospital but you don't want all this other stuff too no and the 95 percent, you're not going to get the disease you will not get sick it's not in your system it's not detectable the five percent you might but there's something called viral load which means how much of the viral particles really is in your system how much are you fighting this thing right and your viral load is a lot lower if you're vaccinated because you have immunity. Your immune system is going to fight it. And even if it sneaks through, the viral load is too low to cause potent uh, symptom profile. And so you won't be as sick. That's the 5%, mm. right? So even though you still get it, your viral loads are going to be a lot lower. And so you won't. Right. Okay. So, but then the issue too that I, I, I'm hearing a lot of is that we can't choose the vaccine that we want none of us and can. you shouldn't it's, you shouldn't it's not about choosing that and that's the problem with all of this information out there it's made people feel like they should have to be able to choose and pick but that's we are in a pandemic this isn't go to costco and pick up what you want like well, that's just not where we're at <laughs> i like know? that analogy said, i don't like costco said, <laughs> <laughs> said, said, years from now you know what i mean like, but like we just like vendors can't be choosers right now you know that's not where we're at yeah. so yes. we know that these are effective remember that that side effect or that potential adverse effect of astrazeneca is very very rare and that they all do the same thing which is prevent hospitalization death and severe illness so yeah if even in, in the case where you want to pick fine we don't, we, we, we rather you don't be choosy and picky in this environment. But even if you want to, just get something. Get the one of your choice. Just get vaccinated. They cannot because... choose. You're in the U.S. They cannot choose. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. but they can go, they can go to a drive. They can wait. Is it? <laughs> no, we don't want not... to be waiting. No. <laughs> it's not, it's not, we can't, oh, that, we can't it's... give this virus more time. There's no yeah. let's wait until. Well, listen, but if, if you're not going to get, let's just say you don't want Johnson and Johnson, because you could you want to wait till the Pfizer comes around. Whatever, get the vaccine. <laughs> the earlier you get it, the better. But even if you're, <laughs> but even if you're not gonna get vaccinated, just please get something. 
Yes, read something. At least. Yeah. Register. Yes, at please least. put your name on the registers list and get it at done. At least, yeah. Please, so please, least, as soon as yes. you can. Or, the earlier or the at better. Least do the research. Figure out what question you still feel has been left yes. unanswered. Figure out what your roadblock is. Because if you had to grade it between a one and ten, how likely are you to get this vaccine after tonight? If you went from a four to a six. That's all well, I'm looking for that. You know, I want to move you towards the right direction and figure out what it is that you still feel has been left unanswered that keeps you from that, like, Chad, I definitely don't yeah. get a vaccine. Yeah. Figure out what that I, is. I, it, um, and, and you're absolutely right. But I, I mean, I have a few questions that are kind of controversial. Ask it. And I, I, yeah, I, but you, I know I, I could ask, ask you. It. I mean, it's not, it's gonna, okay. There's, you know there, there are no it's bad questions. questions. There's no controversial okay. questions. Just it throw it out. It's not my question. It's people are thinking it if they're asking. two different people, but it's a similar line. So aren't vaccines just money makers for pharmaceutical companies? Okay. Pfizer but who's forecast $26 billion from annual sales for COVID vaccine, for COVID-19 vaccines. Okay, so any industry, people are going to make money. Can both not be true? Can they not make money and they still save a bunch of people's lives? Both can be true. And I also want to say it costs money to make vaccines. Everything costs money. So obviously, it's going to cost something for it. But being in Canada, we are so lucky that we have a universal healthcare system where you don't yeah. have to pay for your COVID vaccine. You're not take, it's not coming out of yes. your pocket. This is why we pay high taxes. The government yeah. takes care of that for us. So why not take advantage of being in a country where vaccinations are free? We don't have to pay for it. And everything costs money. Medications cost money. Everything Water costs, costs money. money. Everything costs everything. money. Everything. Nothing's I, free. I, I, guys, I agree with you all. I do. Um, I do think there is an economic angle here we cannot ignore. These companies are making money. They will make record profits. This is exactly true. But it's also true what Dr. Peter said that just because they're making profits doesn't mean the product is not effective. Right. We buy lots of drugs. I mean, we've been buying Tylenol, Advil over the counter for how long? Yeah. How much do you think these companies are making? We, we take antibiotics all the time. So it's not just vaccines. They make money, money from they make money from other sources. Uh, and also, by the way, um, we're not asking questions of Jeff Bezos that he's gotten richer since the Amazon. pandemic. Rich, rich people have gotten so much richer. Ooh. It's filthy. Right. So it's not just vaccine making. It, it is yeah. it's general what's happened in the pandemic. And it's because it's a symptom of a broken system. Yeah. But that's not the right question to ask in the sense that, yes, they make money. But let's talk about the efficacy of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's all we care about. We can't look in their pockets and worry about that in this instance. Let's just worry about the vaccine and focus Victoria, our questions what's on, part, on that What's one. part two? Because I see we're running out of time. <laughs> yes, um, please. <laughs> so why did the vaccine companies fight and silence every doctor who tried to find a solution for COVID-19? What do you mean? I don't know yeah, what I, that's I don't based off of. Um, <laughs> so they're basically saying, so uh, the vaccine companies, so I guess the pharmaceutical companies fight, it, try to fight. So I, 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 I can only assume here. I don't know if, if this person wants to. I think this is based on an opinion. I but think I think it's a just better, an opinion. Yeah, yeah yes. I think that's an opinion. So is there another I mean, if they, if they can bring us evidence of a courtroom yeah. where they fought this, I mean, I, yeah. would, I would like to see it. But I, I mean, so my next has. question. So then my next question, and I will be the last one before we go. Um, oh, so he's, he's, he's talking about the, hydroxy, the hydroxychloroquine. It doesn't what work. Next. It? it doesn't work. Next question. We're not going <laughs> down these. No, 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 no. Next, please. We, we got to get to this last question before we, yeah, we, we have three uh, minutes, guys. Um, what are your thoughts on the vaccine versus the pill that's being worked on? She's hearing that this pill passes human trials and it will be more effective than the vaccines. I don't know. There's nothing in the world it. more effective than a vaccine. I don't think people get this. Listen, don't <laughs> yes, get sick. About the bio Do not get the sick. Works versus Listen. The there is, is nothing this, more effective mm -hmm. than a vaccine. Prevention is way better than cure. Are they talking, about a, than cure. Are they talking no. about a booster no. shot? That's a pill or something? I have no, heard that they're working. Because that's there's the like a polio. There's a different vaccine. Like, is it a healthy vaccine? There's a vaccine no, no, no. that's like this a This is a therapeutic oral. pill she's talking about. This is a therapeutic pill. And there's also inhalation that was made in Israel. In the, in the clinical trials. And yes. it seems to be um, 
well, it, it's being promoted as being more effective than the vaccine. However, so it's a people are therapeutic. Not You're not oh. saying therapeutics. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about therapeutics. Yes. Okay. So I don't know yeah. anything about that. So the thing is, there are therapeutics people are working on. There's one inhalation that's being worked on in Israel, which in the early trials have, has seemed to be effective because it slows the inflammatory response. This the problem is this is your own body's response. The inflammatory response seems to be systemic, and that's you know, it's good and bad. The reason why we die from allergies is because your body is basically overreacting with the inflammation, okay? And, and this is an inflammatory response. So there are therapeutics people are making to slow the inflammatory, the cytokine, the cytokine storm that your body undergoes when, when you get COVID. But there is nothing more effective than a vaccine in that you don't, if you don't get the illness, you don't need a treatment, do you understand? So you can't yeah, say there's so anything it, it more. Sounds like, it sounds like she's talking about something that's supposed to replace the vaccine. I don't think we're familiar with this. It sounds I, maybe I, I'm not pretty I, new. Either. So um, it's something I'll look no. into and do. Some maybe we'll need to do a part two and research yeah. on this. Mm -hmm. But yeah. is there another question? Um, so far. I, the other questions I kind of incorporated into our conversation because I didn't want to be like, stop, the other question. <laughs> um, but um, this is a long one. Um, if the vaccine can protect uh, and, and, in, and India produces vaccines, why haven't they ramped up production to arrest the situation or to stop the situation in India? Because it's too late. A vaccine takes- It's too late. It's too it's late, late, too people. late. It's too late. It's don't too get late to them. India. Don't, don't get to where they India is. They don't want to be there. They don't want to get there. When, you're, get when there. you have people dying like that, vaccines, yeah. the vaccine thing is too late. I think people think, it's confuse vaccine as a therapeutic. It's not a, yeah, it's not, it's a not to treat. It's to prevent. prevent. It's to give it's your immune. It's like teaching somebody. It's like pre preparing for a test. The better you study, the better you will do. It's yeah. like prepping the immune system from when it encounters the virus. That's it. Right. Yes. If we get to the point where India is now, we're in trouble. We yeah. don't want to get and, there. And and this is what people, you know, it is not a cure. It's preventative no, it's measure. Preventive. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and, and so what is happening in India is going to yeah. affect us. Is that you're right? They are a big distribution. They do make yes. a lot. So yes. when their population turn like this, do you think they're going to yes. send some to us? No, they're well. Gonna... Probably they still will because their government. But, has but, also but failed. We, we cannot <laughs> no, compare. <they're... laughs> we cannot compare the population in India to our population. No, I'm just saying that they manufacture. So because of politics, they can't. They yeah. wouldn't. Yes. It wouldn't look good on them to now send stuff when their people are dying. No, it that's would also not. very true. That's they're also they're very, gonna very true. they're gonna slow down, and we're gonna get the production. Less. Yes, that's very true. likely. That's it. We're gonna feel it around the world because of what's happening. And also they have but, a different healthcare system. Our healthcare yes. system in the Western world is completely different from, from the healthcare system. From there. So you can't really compare what's happening over there to what's happening here. Let's just hope that if we all it get doesn't. vaccinated, we will not end up there as you know what they're going through right now. Indians are asking the same thing though. They're saying, you know, if we make all this all these vaccines, 60% of vaccines are produced in India, and Indians are asking what's going on. Why are people dying and we're sending it out? It is, it is the contracts that they've signed with, com with people, with countries that they have to produce for. And unfortunately, contracts they neglected their own people. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I'm broken. saying, unfortunately, they've, they've neglected their own people. This is how they're in that predicament. Uh, so Canada that's why too. India's, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think a lot of countries have dropped the ball on this. Brazil. And, and we don't uh, want to get USA, in. no, don't get there. But that's the key message and that we don't want to get there. But one last no. comment that I wanted to ask you. So in regards to the anxiety, you know, what's your approach to the person who comes in and maybe Senna could, you know, delve more into this. What is your approach as, as a healthcare provider for a patient who comes to you and says, I have severe anxiety. I have all this information, you know, thank you guys but I'm still feeling anxious about it. Is it like anxious about COVID or anxious about needles? Because some no, people are just afraid of needles. No, it's not yet. Yeah, a lot of people are afraid of needles, but I'm talking about getting this new vaccine. It's not new, we know that, but I'm just saying to them, because you know it's lay people, they coming at us and they're asking you, I get, I, get I find out. Fear. I find out what the fear is. I have to 
we have to find out where the fear lies and if I can dispel it, if I can, you know, bring some evidence and facts that can sometimes rationalizing can help people calm down. And sometimes when people are anxious, they just want it to be done without like, don't tell me, just do it. Don't tell me when it's happened, distract me and just do it so that I don't even know it's happening. You know, we do that for kids. We distract. So it, it really depends on what their fear is. And let's try to figure out how we can uh, make them feel more comfortable. And to add to that, I think anxiety too is like a lot of, you know, being afraid of the unknown. Like what yeah. are they anxious about particularly? Is it the mm. vaccine? Is it what is going to happen to their body? It's the fear of the unknown. People can, you can be anxious about anything. You can be anxious about going to get a coffee down the street. It's all in your head of what you are afraid that's going to happen. So I would say, try and find out what exactly are they worried about? Is it receiving the vaccine or what's going to happen to them after the vaccine? Or is it the information that they've heard? And try and help them to sort out facts from myths because sometimes it can all be in their head. I've heard this, I've heard that, and this and that. Well, that's not true. Look at it this way and look at it that way to help them make an informed decision. Yeah.